how to name cycloalkanes. Your job is to figure out how many carbons are in the loop, and then sometimes if you have things sticking out of it, you'll have to number those substituents just so that the numbers are as low as possible. The cycloalkane portion though here is about you counting how many carbons are in the ring. Remember, you don't have to show the carbons themselves. Each vertex of one of these stick figures counts as a carbon. One, two, three. That's triangle, three corners, three sides. Hopefully that's not a surprise. Three carbons in a ring though makes a prope, prope meaning three carbons, and because they're in a ring, you have to preface prope with cyclo. What I mean is that three carbons gives you the prope they're all single bonded together, so it's propane. And because they're all in a ring, we preface it with cyclo. This is cyclopropane, a ring of three carbons single bonded. Yes, ring of four carbons single bonded. Cyclo for the ring, bute for the four carbons. And they're all single bonded, so it's ane. You know what it is for five? One, two, three, four, five corners here. Ring, cyclo, five, pent, single bonds, ain. Beautiful. Beat me to the punch on this. Prove to me you can do it. I believe in you. I can do it. A ring of six carbons, single bonded, is cyclo, hex, ain. Beautiful. Now we have six carbons in a ring here, so we have a cyclohexane. Let's see if I can fit it in there. I probably should have given myself more room. But we have two fluorines here now as well. Your job is to number the ring so that these fluorines have the lowest combination of numbers possible. They're the only interesting thing, so you can just call one of those carbons number one. I'm gonna pick this one to be number one. If I go around this way, that fluorine is on carbon two, three, four, five. If I go around this way, it's two, three. Three is lower. So I'm gonna end up calling this one one comma three difluoro. Note that the U comes before the O. One, three difluorocyclohexane. It's the same root of cyclohexane, but it shows that we have two fluorines, one on the first carbon of the ring. It doesn't matter which one that is. And then another one, two carbons away at carbon three. Cool? I'm just gonna point this one out in case you have a question like it in your homework. This is a ring of eight carbons. So we're going to have a cyclooct, but they're not all single bonded together here. There is a double bond in there. So I'm gonna have to call this cyclooctene. Ene, meaning there's a double bond. Now, a, a cycloalkene needs to have the lowest carbon, carbon number one, on the bond, and then carbon number two has to be the next carbon of the double bond. So I'm gonna call this carbon one, and that carbon two, and that sets my numbers for the rest of the carbons and whatever substituents are there. I don't need to tell people that the double bond starts at carbon one, we all know that it's true here. Carbon one, two, three, four, five. This iodine is on carbon five of the ring. Remembering that this has to be carbon one, and the second portion of the double bond has to be carbon two. One, two, three, four, five. We'll call this five iodocyclooctene. There shouldn't be a space there. It's all one word. Hey, that wasn't too bad. The idea is that cyclo represents the fact that it's a ring. You'll use the same prefix you would use if, as if they were in a straight chain. Uh, Probe, bute, pent, hex, hept, oct, non, dec, whatever. And then you'll probably have ane if they're all single bonded to each other, but you could have ene or ine depending on what else is going on in the molecule. Not too bad, pretty easy. That was a brisk four minutes. Best of luck to you.